we show up on scene, we want to save the car. Um, what that means is we'll, if we can, try to put it in park, turn the ignition off, um, uh, put the emergency brake on, uh, and then we're going to stabilize, the windows, and then we can kind of get to town again. Um, but with, with the safe in the car, with uh, the newer ones, all of this stuff is powered now, you know? So if it's still on and it's not a hindrance, like if you can roll the windows down, roll the windows down. If you can move the seats back, you can move the steering wheel up, any of that stuff that can kind of help you, you know, maybe that'll just move the seat back to get there. Right? Um, and then all the new stuff, I can't remember what year it was, 17, 17, 16. A lot of this is all going to be laminated now too. So it's not like it's a huge deal, but that stuff's really bad to breathe. Um, it gets into your lungs and it doesn't ever come out. It's gonna cause cancer. So we try to get away from cutting the windshields and stuff, you know, because, but if you do have to do that, you know, protect your, your airway, protect your patient's airway. Um, there's some techniques, if you got blankets, tarps, you can put in on the, on the patient, but the other thing you could do is, you know, you got a patient here, you break these windows, you could grab floor mats, put a floor mat up on the inside, break it, and then just push it out. You know, glass all over. Um, I like to at least get somebody in there to talk to the patient. Like, hey, how are you? What's hurt? What's stuck? Uh, and try to calm them down a little bit. And then tell them what's going on. Be like, it is going to be really loud. There's going to be stuff cutting around you. If anything starts pushing on you, I want you to let me know. Um, make sure you're always peeling and peeking. Um, we teach that you don't have to do it on both sides. Okay? So if you're going to cut on this side, you know, if you've got room to the other, somebody else can be over there peeling and peeking. And then all you have to do is look through the glass. Like, yep, cutting them from there. Okay. It should be mirrored on on either side. Um, well, let's just say we got a patient in the front. They're pinned, okay. And let's say they got some intrusion here, and we can't get either door. All right. So what we're gonna do is the spreader's gonna come back after you break this glass, and you can either open it up or you can pinch it. Okay. All you're trying to do is just get a little purchase point here, and there's a nader pin in there. And that's all you're trying to do is just six foot. Um, we try to teach the to spread enough to where you can get the cutter in without popping it. But a lot of times it'll just pop on you. Um, just as long as you're aware of it and stuff, it's really not that big. So as the spreader's doing that, the cutter can come up, make a cut here. And then you want to come in with cutters. Everybody can see. I'd like to. You see this hinge here? I like to go either above it or right below it. A lot of the strength is right in here. So sometimes if you can get up high here, then you can kind of get your purchase point here and start spreading. And then as this goes, then you can get your spreaders in here and then use this post down low and it'll just pull this hole. Um, so with this cut up high here, now this whole thing's gonna swing open. It'll be open, the B post will be out of the way. And then you can come up and you can cut your hinges and take the whole thing off, okay? And if they're still working there, you can come over here and get ready for the dash roll. Um, your shotgun rail here, if you cut up high here, um, before your your leaf springs here, you're gonna lose a lot of that integrity. Okay, so you just wanna make a cut somewhere somewhere in here and just go right through the hood. Doesn't matter, just take your cutter and you're just making a cut there. And then same thing over here on this A post. I like to cut above this end. Can. Sometimes it's even best just to take this wiring harness. I like to take anything the car is going to give me. Okay, so there's already kind of an opening right here. So put your cutters right in there. And you're going to cut. And then the spreader's going to come in and you can do a dash lift from the outside. You're not lifting that dash, that 18 inches, that textbook training, blast that thing all the way up in the air. A lot of times when people's feet are pinned underneath the dash, we're just trying to get the dash back to where it used to be. Look at this dash, how it's, this side's still staying intact. Um, so there's a bar that goes across here that we'll be able to see here in a little bit. That's a support for the dash. But when it starts just lifting this side, it's a perfect indication that there's they're all bar ties. There's two in here. And when it starts doing that, you need more lift to have to in there. The push down is more of like a rapid, let's say we come in here and this person is, we need to get them out now. Um, all you have to do is pop this door, make a cut here, make a cut here, throw your spreaders on top, 
start spreading it down and get a ram in there. And it pushes this whole thing down, slows out of the way and you can get So let's say we're up against a Jersey barrier or a semi truck and we have no access to the other side. We'll do what we call as an offside dash lift. So we'll yeah. lift here and then we'll throw the ram in and we'll lift this really high. You pay attention to the passenger compartment as we've got all those pillars and posts to drop down to the patient compartment, right? There's a patient sitting there and you're, still, and you're cutting the roof, you need to pay attention to that. Have dudes on the outside so that as weight is getting put on that roof and wants to sit down, that we can move it and operate that. Simple piece of webbing, the water knot, okay? When you get to this point and your patient's feet are pinned up underneath the dash and the pedals are in the way, right? Pedals are strong front to back, they have no lateral stability. So you can just fish in there with a piece of webbing, two of you on it, it's a one, two, three pull. A little stout. But you guys can see we're getting it to pull about an inch out of the way, which may be all you need. You guys can see they found an airbag. What's that tell us? Cylinders. Cylinders. So we have an airbag, there's got to be a cylinder somewhere. They're back here. You guys can see them, they're hidden back down in here on both sides. Nine times out of 10, when you peel one side of the car, the exact same thing as on the other side of the car. Do not cut them. This is that ACU. So they're generally gonna look like this. This one, I'm not sure why it's not yellow, but that's what they're gonna look like, okay? Somewhere in here, you will find it. A lot of times they're actually further up in here. So when we talk about that blind center console dash lift, you put your spreaders in here, we don't wanna come in contact with that guy, okay? So those are gonna be somewhere in here, so that's important why you gotta pull all that plastic out to find good spots of metal to push against. Here's your uh, seat belt pretensioner. Okay, this is pyrotechnic, not a clock spring. All right, so that's your little pyrotechnic guy right there. That's what we'll deploy to lock the seat belt down. Uh, these guys jumped on it really quick, but remember, cut seat belts, okay? When you cut seat belts, okay, you wanna cut them at an angle. Take your seatbelt cutter and try to go straight across, it'll just bunch up in there. So you want to do diagonal cuts on your seatbelts, cut them. If you don't cut seatbelts when you're doing the blowout or the laydown, the seatbelt will hang you up every time. Like, why aren't we getting the door to go out? Because the seatbelts don't.